Uh, I just inserted this because in the last panel we were talking about, well, Switzerland, the Swiss People's Party and unemployment. And actually I'm working on the Swiss People's Party, so I just inserted this. Um, what you see here is that the upper one is concerning the Swiss People's Party. And you see that out of uh, yeah, 3,000 people who cast votes in our sample, 30 were unemployed. That's not a lot, that's 1% out of the actual unemployment rate of 3%. And one of these 30 people voted, or 29 people voted for the Swiss People's Party. Um, 17 voted for the Social Democratic Party in Switzerland. So just as an intro, um, this brings me to the point we are actually looking at in our paper. It's often the case that well, when you want to explain the success of well, anti-immigrant parties, within a country or across countries, we rely on indicators that are, for example, the unemployment rate, or unemployment rate changes, changes in the group size of the immigrant population. It's mainly, well, socio-structural indicators. But that doesn't always work. For example, in Switzerland, it doesn't work very well, and sometimes it doesn't work at all. So we wanted to look at something else institutional and political culture. And, well, yeah, we think this is necessary because usually uh, the, the difference in the success of the Swiss People's Party is partially explained by simply inserting a dummy into the model saying, okay, there are the German-speaking cantons and the non-German-speaking cantons, and there is a significant difference between these, these two groups but it doesn't really explain why that is. And, well, you could guess it is the language, but that would suggest, that, for example, extending that Germany had a major anti-immigrant party and France had, well, not such a major anti-immigrant party, which is kind of the other way around. So, yeah, we want to explore this a bit further. This illustrates the whole difference um, across time starting in 1991 with the rise of the Swiss People's Party. It's a pretty stable difference between the French and the Italian-speaking regions and all the German-speaking cantons. And when you insert a dummy, this disappears more or less. Uh, literature, or recent literature, on anti-immigrant attitudes has found one thing. They related integration regimes, citizenship regimes, but we call them integration regimes because more than just the creation of citizenship, um, to anti-immigrant attitudes or tolerance or threat. And there is a positive relationship between inclusive integration regimes and positive attitudes towards immigrants. This is mainly based on papers by Walden and Schlüter, and they say integration regimes are not just policies, they are institutionalized norms or cultural traditions that are well, <coughs> expressed in policies. And they argue that the connection between policy and so, uh, integration attitudes or immigration attitudes is new institutionalized space, it's political <coughs> learning and socialization. Well, there is of course the problem of causality. Usually you would assume success of anti-immigrant parties restricts integration regimes, they become more exclusive, less permissive. But, for example, Kasmude says, well, in an overview of literature on the subject, it is not a perfect relationship. Anti-immigrant parties should be seen as catalysts rather than initiators. And they are neither necessary nor sufficient for the restriction of well, integration regimes. So, yeah, we think that allows us to use this as an independent variable in our model. <coughs> and the advantage of Switzerland being a federal country is, of course, that it has subnational variation of integration regimes, quite substantial subnational variation, and they are seemingly path dependent remarkably stable over time, indicating the French and the German speaking traditions of integration regimes. And in a study by Anita Manischal of 
last year. It doesn't seem that the parliamentary or the electoral success in cantonal elections is directly related to the restriction of integration regimes. Um, also, the government participation is not directly related. But the voting behavior is. So, um, we also argue that there may be a status quo, a direct relationship just between integration regimes and well, the vote shares or support received by the Swiss People's Party. This is just a psychological mechanism people like their policies and vote for them accordingly. So that's our model, uh, multi-level model. We argue that the integration regimes influence the immigration attitudes and this influences the individual voting or supporting of the Swiss People's Party and its uh, mediation model. So these are the hypotheses associated with this. And we are doing a cross-sectional similar systems design type of analysis using individual data from the Swiss electoral survey or Swiss electoral studies and the integration policy index created by Anita Manacha and the other contextual controls coming from the Swiss Federal Statistical Office. Our main dependent variable is the probability to vote for the Swiss People's Party. We use this probability or uh, utility it is well, metric or approximately metric and it allows us to work more conveniently with uh, a mediation multi-level model because multi-level mediation with a logistic uh, uh, multi-level logistic regression analysis is not very well developed. Our main independent variable is the integration regimes and we have 1,400 more than 1,400 individuals nested in 26 countries. We use several, because the literature is not absolutely clear on this, what type of immigration related attitude is responsible or is a possible candidate for the mediation. So we cover a broad range of um, perceptions of threat, the main ones, economic and cultural threat, but also physical threat, and more. Um, Opposite. Support for integration, multiculturalism, and support for Muslim rights. The aggregate relationships look very nice, kind of very negative relationship between the inclusiveness of an integration regime and the vote share received by the Swiss People's Party, with the French speaking cantons being in the lower right. The Italian-speaking canton Ticino is an exception because they have their own anti-immigrant party or partly anti-immigrant party. So if we combined the voting propensities of both the anti-immigrant party in the Italian-speaking region and the Swiss People's Party, the Ticino would move a bit up to the uh, fit of line. And we have to do this for Geneva too, so it would move a bit up to Geneva being also a bit of an outlier in the French speaking cantons. So that would uh, weaken the relationship, but it remains absolutely significant. This is the effect controlling for individual variables, which are not displayed here. This is the effect of the inclusiveness of integration regimes on the vote shares received or the party support received by the Swiss People's Party and that works quite well. We also find actually, yeah, we also find a positive effect on integration regimes on our mediating variable, just showing you one. Uh, the cantonal integration regimes have a positive effect on integration support, not on threat uh, and not on multiculturalism or minority rights, Muslim rights, just on the cantonal, uh, on the integration support. Just, it fits in a certain way, but I'll come to that later. Um, what we find also uh, quite obvious, immigration attitudes matter. 
a lot for voting for the Swiss People's Party. They have a significant effect, all of them except economic threat, which becomes insignificant, but when entered alone into the model is significant. So, looking at the indirect effect, in a very conservative estimation approach, controlling for a lot of other immigration attitudes, the indirect effect is rather small. <coughs> so there is a 13% indirect effect between uh, integration regimes and the support for the Swiss People's Party. When we take a less conservative estimation <coughs> approach, we look more or less only at integration support and exclude the other immigration related variables, the effect becomes larger. So it's almost one third of the effect is indirect. It would go even further if excluded uh, controlling variable Euroscepticism, which has surprisingly its own mediating effect. I put this in there. This is not an, uh, we didn't know it, anticipate it. We did control for it. It has a mediating effect and showing a clear relationship to the Swiss People's Party as being relatively anti immigrant <coughs> and also very, very Eurosceptical. So it's probably a statistical, uh, statistical artifact. Concluding this, we find that inclusive integration regimes predict inclusive attitudes, high support for integration, which in turn decreases chances or probabilities of supporting or voting for the Swiss People's Party. And this does not, this is not a perfect mediation, so there is some remaining relationship between integration regimes and support for the Swiss People's Party. So this doesn't explain the differences between French-speaking countries and German-speaking countries perfectly. It may be a status quo bias, it may be some endogeneity in the model, it may be unobserved other mediators that we did not add in our data.